Praise the Lord. Praise oh, God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We just thank and praise yeah. the Lord for just everything that's gone forth on the line tonight. And I pray that even as everything has been, um, you know, uh, prayers have been rendered and, and, and also scripture has been read that someone is feeling encouraged right now. And that is um, yes, our Lord. prayer for the prayer gathering is that uh, encouragement comes and that spirits are lifted. So tonight's word is going to come from um, Isaiah, the first chapter in his verse 18. And it reads, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And um, the the message for tonight is, is going to be about uh, God allowing returns and exchanges. God allows returns and exchanges. And we when we... Uh, we consider the, the attributes and the characteristics of, of God our Father. We realize that um, this is a part of him that he allows us to come to him just as we are. And even as we come to him just as we are, he is willing to exchange his nature out for our nature. He's willing to put on us a coat of righteousness, and he was willing to take on the um, our unrighteousness. And we consider even the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross is that he, when he died on the cross, he took all of our sins. He took everything that would uh, afflict us, our sins, our infirmities, our worries, our concerns, and those those. Uh, different things, they were actually nailed to the cross. So that just uh, is a part of it. This uh, shows that side of God our Father that he allows returns and exchanges. He allows us to return to him, and not only that, but he exchanges his righteousness for our unrighteousness. So let's look at, um, before we go any further, let's look at the, the definition of the two words, return and exchange. A return is an act of coming or going back to a place or activity. So if, as far as it goes for our salvation, we're actually returning back to God our Father. We're trying to get back in a relationship with her, you know, to be in a connection with him after we have not, we was born, but we're not born again. So when we are born again, we're actually returning back to God our Father. Um, as far as exchange, exchange means to give something or to receive something of the same kind in return. Amen. So in case of our Amen. salvation, we exchange, as I said before, our nature to put on his garment, to be clothed in righteousness. And when we do that, we receive something so much better than what we had before. And if you're not sure that, then let me pose the question to you right now. How many on the line can agree that life is so much better once we've made Jesus our choice? Amen. Amen. So once we have Amen. Given, once Amen. We have, Glory to God. Once we have become serious about our salvation and our relationship with the Lord, then we'll realize that life begins to turn out a little bit better. Not saying that it's been, it's easy. Because we still face tests and we may face trials. We may face a lot of different things, but we don't face them alone. We always have him to, go, to accompany us and to be with us. Even when there's no one there else there to be with us, we will always have the Lord with us because he promises so many times in the word. He said, uh, never will I leave you, neither will I forsake you. And it also said in the word that if my mother and my father forsake me, that I know that the Lord would not forsake me. And it doesn't mean that our mother and father will walk away, but we always have, there are moments that we have to walk and do things just kind of like on our own, but we always have the Lord with us because he can go in places with us that no one else could. And even spiritually, he can travel in those different dimensions, in those different places and areas of our lives that no one else can travel. Amen. 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 So just because we have the gift of salvation through Jesus, as well as grace, it does not mean that you and I get to sin as we please, only to quickly say, God, forgive me. Amen. So we know that person that they would actually do something 
or they say they would say something that they know is not appropriate or you know they may slip a word or something and then they'll say okay you know God forgive me for saying that God forgive me for doing that and some people they just kind of like use it as like a little a little uh pass in a sense you know that's like my past of just getting out of this so the Lord he warns us in first Peter the second chapter verse 16 he tells us he said live as people who are free not using your freedom as a cover-up or a cloak for Amen. evil, but living as servants of God. So that tells us even though we have freedom in Christ, it does not mean that we take that freedom and we use it as a cover-up. We don't use that past and do something and we'll say, God, forgive me for doing that. God, forgive me for saying that. So we don't, we don't always pull that past or that ticket. So he says, live as free people, but also live as servants of God. That means live upright. There's a standard. Once you, once you have accepted Christ into your heart, into your life, then you have to walk in that standard. As it says in the first psalm, that, you know, blesses, uh, blesses the man that walketh upright. So when we walk upright, we're upholding the word of God, we're upholding the statues, and we're upholding the character of God and the fruit of the Spirit in our own lives. Amen. Yes. Amen. So the work of the cross brought us back into fellowship with God the Father. Romans 5 and 10 says, For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? So we're only saved through the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. And it is through his death on the cross it's uh, 2 Peter 2, 24 to, through verses 25. It says, through Christ's death on the cross, those who turn to him are delivered from both the penalty and the power of sin. So if we want to walk in our freedom, then we have to, first of all, accept Jesus as our Savior and accept his death on the cross, knowing that when he died on the cross, he took on everything. He took on everything, even some things that we have not uh, encountered that he took on all these different things so that we will be free from the penalty of sin and death and that not only that, but we have our freedom, we have our liberty, we have our inheritance through Christ Jesus, and we are actually reconciled back to God the Father. Amen. 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 And, and uh, just considering our relationship with, um, with our Heavenly Father, like any relationship that we cherish, we work hard to maintain it. When you're making plans to do something, you plan to make decisions with the other person or the other people in mind, the people that you love in mind. So as our relationship with God evolves, our habits will begin to change. And with that, we realize that when we fall off the wagon, what do we do? We don't just stay down, as Donnie McClure can say, we fall down, but we have to get back up. Amen. We can't just stay down. We just can't lay down because there is so much power that we have and so much authority that we have through Jesus that we just can't lay down and just lay down our salvation and not pick, get back up again. God has shown Amen. us too much, and he's done too much for us just to fall back and say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to quit, and I'm going to do something else. We have to. If we fall back, we have to get back up again. And then as we oh, get yeah. back up again, that we know that he is, as I said before, he said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you, that he is right there just to catch us whenever yes, we fall. Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So anytime that we are making decisions and we're doing, uh, making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, um, considering our relationship with, the, with, with Christ, it should hurt us to hurt the other person. It should hurt us to hurt hurt our Heavenly Father. So we should be careful about decisions, conversations, and confessions, things that we're confessing out of our mouth, things that, that may come to our ears and may come to our heart, but when it comes out of our mouth, that's a true confession. So this is how, this is how it is with, with our relationship with, with God our Father. When you draw close to him by confession, you're confessing who he is. You're saying God is good. You know, you're saying God is faithful. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. You know, you say, um, I feel encouraged through the Holy Spirit. So, but even as we're confessing that, we can also confess other different things. You can confess sins. You can confess doubts and fears. 
and whatnot, and you can say it in the wrong way, but he does not want us to confess it that way. He wants want us to address it in a way that we are speaking of it as if we are triumph over all of those things. We are triumph over sin. We are triumph over doubts. We are triumph over our fears. So this is the exchange. We're taking our sins, we're taking our doubts, we're taking our fears, and we're laying it on the table. As uh, 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And because he cares for us, it's like this, we can, it's like we're sitting at a table and we're putting everything down that's actually a burden to us and we're laying it out in front of the Lord and we're saying these are my cares and my concerns and I know that I can't carry it, but Jesus, you can carry these things for me because you've already carried that cross for me. So I'm nailing all of this to the cross that you will take care of those things and you will take care of whatever uh, is a burden to me, whatever is a weighing heavy on my heart. You can take all of those things and you can actually turn those things around in my favor. You can turn it around for my good. So as we are confessing, we can say casting all our cares, but then again, we can say Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Because even Amen. though I'm encounter, encountering all of these different things and these dilemmas and these problems and whatnot, they're coming at me. They're coming at me even as the enemy is like shooting arrows towards us. And they're coming, these attacks are coming. Then we can always say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So that's how I'm turning my confessions around because I make when I confess the, um, that he is uh, greater, then I'm making him much bigger than my problem. If you, if you and I can do that, then we're making him much bigger because he is much bigger than whatever we can encounter. He's much Amen. bigger than those moments where we feel that our spirits are low because we know that he has all power. He can turn everything around. He can turn every situation around. He can turn every atmosphere around. So even if you're sitting in and all of a sudden, if you have a low moment that you realize that, you know, if you begin to worship and you begin to pray and you begin to talk to him, that you can change everything around you, your atmosphere around just by, having that communion with him because we have power and authority. I'm taking my weakness and I'm, I'm taking my weakness and I'm handing it to him. I'm taking my humanity and I'm taking on his nature inside of me because this is the exchange. I'm returning to him this old nature, but he's given me strength. He's given me power. And that is he's making me great on the inside because of who he is. Amen. 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 So praise God. That is the word for tonight. And I see that we have kind of like ran up on our time right now. So we're going to go ahead and just finalize our prayer gathering and end our time right now um, with prayer. I thank and praise God for just everyone that uh, that is faithfully joining us on the prayer gathering line and also just uh, sharing the information with others so that they may join us on the line. And also for those who have become like uh, financial partners, those who have um, sowed a seed and seed in, into this ministry. And I continue to pray that the Lord will continue to bless you all for just um, going into this ministry. And we thank and praise the Lord for all of that. Amen. 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 So let's end our time with prayer right now. Father, we thank you right now. Father God, we thank you for for being in the midst. We thank you, Father God, for just um, having your way, Lord. We thank you for the encouragement, Lord, that has gone forth right now, Lord. We pray, Lord, even as this week goes on, that, Father God, that you will keep every last one of us covered under your blood, Jesus, that you go before us, that you are with us, that you've given your angels charge to be with us, to minister, to encourage, to strengthen us. Father God, to straighten out the crooked places right now, Lord. Father God, we thank you right now for everything that you're doing, Father. We pray, Father God, for every city and state. We pray for every continent right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray, the Lord, that you touch the minds of people, Lord, and the hearts of people right now, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that you return back to them and that they will open up their hearts and their minds to you and accepting you. Father God, that you begin to heal them, heal their minds, 
heal their hearts, heal whatever it is that, that's in them, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you would touch every city, state, and nation, Lord, concerning, Father God, the violence and everything that's taking place. We pray, Lord, that you would, Father God, just allow there to be a cease and desist. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and Father God, that you will be glorified and honored through your works in this earth, that when heaven invades earth, Lord, and you show up, that things change. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Week in the Lord.